Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, welcome everybody. This is uh, Guest Thursday, and we are in part two uh, with Larry Collette out of uh, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, our good friend who uh, Larry and I uh, co uh, put together material on uh, hearing God's voice, which which Kathy and I are right in the middle of sharing. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, that's that's the material that Larry uh, developed and Rich uh, helped, and uh, we taught. And Kathy, now you get to walk through it with us, you know, as we. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've uh, been enjoying this whole thing, and I know lots of our listeners are really benefiting from the work that you guys put in and what God laid on your heart to share, because I think this is an essential thing that people need to understand and grow in, right? Yep. Uh, and Larry uh, uh, Larry and I have uh, grown together in our abiding and really come together with uh, developing material together, uh, teaching, you know, abiding and, and what it means. And we've got some uh, great stories. We won't get into it. One of, one of our great stories uh, is Larry's involved with um, – uh, the uh, uh, abortion uh, right for life issue in St. Mm-hmm. Louis or in Missouri, actually. And uh, we did an abiding retreat for a group of leaders <laughs> and, uh, led by this woman who was kind of had a you know facilitator of the of the state. And um, she got it. She just she just mm-hmm. understood it like, oh, that's what we need to do. Why don't we just follow God? <laughs> Mm-hmm. And she learned to abide and hear God's voice. It's kind of cool. And God led her to a series of amazing things to literally where she experienced no abortions in Missouri. Um, mm. And it's all supernatural. And what Larry did was just keep discipling her. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and, and then she's being used in a, in a more of a national level now. I mean, so that's a, that's a great story. We, we don't have time to go into the detail of that, but that was Fun. And that was all by Larry just saying, would you like to learn to abide? Mm. <laughs> and she said, yeah. That's beautiful. Um, but Larry, as um, uh, you know, you look, first of all, I'd like to have you share. Uh, you were the CEO of Cass Bank for many, many years uh, and brought, you know, Christ into that organization through, you know, God's will. Just tell us briefly about your your experience as being the CEO of that of that bank there in St. Louis. Well, I I actually um, I actually started uh, working for uh, the bank when I was a junior in college, uh, working part time. <laughs> um, uh, got the job at the uh, uh, the uh, outsourcing office at the university, and um, what was interesting, I was hired by the CEO because the person I was going to work for was on vacation. And that became significant because when he returned, I realized he wouldn't have hired me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But the fact that the CEO did really help. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't know why he hired me, uh, (laughs) but, uh, but he did. And um, I worked actively for the company for uh, 47 years. Oh, wow. Uh, Then I spent another seven years, uh, both in consulting and on the board before fully uh, retiring. It was uh, a a great experience. I had mentioned in our uh, previous session that the greatest gift God has provided me was my wife, and that is true. but uh, outside of her and our family, uh, this job was uh, has been uh, in second. Uh, I, I, my career there was uh, just so wonderful. Uh, I have trouble, had trouble separating the company from the family because it was all so integrated. It just went so smoothly. Mm. And a lot of that was due to the man who hired me. He was a Christian man, uh, became a mentor uh, as well as a boss. And then after he retired and I succeeded him, he became a, be- a best friend. We would meet 
uh, uh, several times a year and just talk primarily about spiritual items. He's a great man, uh, and I I thank God for him and his presence in my life. But in the, in the time there, what was exciting is that we uh, we the company was able to move from being a relatively small local financial institution into a global uh, technology information processing company, hmm. and the the bank, which is critical to the functioning of the total business uh, because of the movement of funds and the investment of funds in those processes, uh, became embedded in a, in a bigger company called Cass Information. And the Lord had moved me into that part of the business uh, sort of unwillingly. I saw uh, my, my degrees uh, were in finance and accounting, mm -hmm. and uh, I had moved up into the banking arena uh, and then I saw my future there, uh, and, and then they, my boss said, I want you to go over here into an area that was up full of problems. And, uh, and, and by the way, I, I really accelerated those numbers of problems. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I made it even worse, but, uh, nevertheless, uh, asked me to go over there and, uh, because it was best for the company, I did it. But I was uh, also told that there probably wouldn't be a job for me back at the bank if it didn't work out. <laughs> well, um, after a series of some gigantic mistakes, the Lord really took that business and it became the driver of the whole company. Mm -hmm. And then when my boss retired, there wasn't anybody who really knew both sides of the business. Ah. Uh, and the <laughs> I'm sure the board would have liked to have had more alternatives, but they really mm -hmm. didn't have any. And that's, that is how I ascended into the CEO position. And the company has uh, continued to move in the information area. Uh, and it's uh, uh, now, uh, uh, again, uh, as a global business. But the bank, uh, we were able to change uh, its focus from, from just a general bank uh, into one that focused on uh, small businesses. When I say small, they're uh, somewhat uh, much up into a couple hundred million dollars in sales. Uh, and, and then we added working with churches and ministries. Mm. Uh, and that was a significant uh, change that occurred uh, against the wishes of some of the regulators. Mm. But that over the years became the largest portion of the bank's uh, activities. Both areas have done well, but it allowed us to move uh, into across the country with bigger churches and ministries and to do things that we never anticipated we would be doing. Mm -hmm. And clearly that was the Lord's will for us to do that, allowed me to not only meet uh, uh, some people who were in some significant ministries, but also to be involved with others. The uh, uh, the local uh, team that uh, worked with Billy Graham Ministries uh, to bring a uh, uh, one of one of uh, his missions to St. Louis in 1999 um, uh, selected me to be the chair of that particular crusade. Um, I told them, I think you need to really think that through a little more thoroughly, uh, which they declined to do. And that became a, another significant event in my life. So it just opened up a lot of uh, areas and, and one that allowed me to live and exercise my faith uh, in the exercise of, of company activities in a very unique but broader way than I would have otherwise. So. It was a great experience. I loved it, love the company, still do. Uh, but clearly, it was one that the Lord had ordained. I mean, how many, how many people are able to work that long mm -hmm. for one company and be able to experience as much as I have across the breadth of of their businesses? Um, it, it's 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 a un, it was a unique exper experience, and I really thank God for that. Yep, that's yeah, beautiful. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I know it's been a, a blessing, you know, for you, and and you were a blessing to them. Um, 
great example of the covenant, by the way. Um, so as we think about, uh, we talked last time about hearing God's voice, you know, and Larry has developed a lot of material and taking what he's learned and we, we put it together and we have a course. Kathy and I are actually working through that on the podcast and then we'll have an actual course out for that. Uh, but Larry, as you um, now look at uh, helping people understand what it means to hear God's voice, I think uh, maybe two things we could do is one, why don't you share how you hear God's voice and an example of that. Um, and one example that I thought about might be uh, when God asked you to build, build a garden. <laughs> uh, you know, kind of take us through that example that was unique, personal. You, you actually heard God speak to you. You had to be obedient to that. Uh, share what that looked like for you, and then we can share a little bit about what would we say to people that say, okay, I'd like to learn this, you know, how could I learn it? And so let's start with maybe you sharing a real example, and it doesn't have to be about the garden, maybe it'd be some other one that's on your heart, but what, what could you share with us how you hear God's voice? Well, with me, it's a, it has developed into a, a pretty personal conversation that I, I hear him um, through this still small voice now, there are certain places that I'm able to hear better than other mm -hmm. places, and there's reasons for that. Um, but using, uh, go back to the garden, that was one example. After I went through a, a pretty serious health crisis, and the Lord uh, uh, took care of it, you know, it, 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 I had to, I've had to live with it all along, but it really hasn't been, been a big deal. No. Uh, uh, and uh, after I went through that, about three years later than that, we had moved into a new home, oh, five years before that. And the Lord said, I want you to, well, I'm sorry, it goes back to a, uh, uh, to a, a, one of Rich's trips through his ministry overseas. And Rich had asked the question, he says, what, what is God saying to you? Well, at that time I wasn't speaking. I wasn't hearing him speak. So, uh, he said, uh, so I, I mentioned that and he says, well, what, what, uh, what things have been coming to your mind as you've been doing your Bible study and all that? And I told him that for some reason, it made no sense. This issue of garden, uh, <laughs> came up and, and I was not a gardener. Uh, uh, and, and did, in fact, if I looked at a plant, it had a tendency to die. Um, but, uh, other than taking, cutting the grass, uh, taking care of whatever shrubs we had, which were few at the time. I, I really didn't do anything. Um, but the Lord said, I want you to plant a garden in the back of your house. Well, our house is on a hill and it's all rock. And uh, I, other than the forest, the trees that were there, there's no way uh, you're going to get any sun there. Nothing's going to grow. And I told the Lord that, like he, he wasn't aware of it. And um, and he said, no, I want you to do it because it's really important. And so um, uh, this occurred over the course of a couple of years. Rich had to remind me again of this, and I had to get mm -hmm. deeper into the scriptures to understand and then to begin to hear God say that. But it became clear he wanted me to do it. So I have the most expensive garden in the world <laughs> because uh, hardly, you know, it's hard to get things to grow because it's so rocky, the soil's so rocky and you have to stay with it. But it, over the years, it's evolved into a very beautiful area, uh, almost uh, a full acre of garden now. Mm. Uh, and it requires a lot of work to tend it, but it is beautiful. Now, the reason the Lord wanted me to do it it's in two sections. Mm -hmm. One is, uh, it, and this came out of the studies with Rich, that he, part of it was to remind me of, of, of Eden, mm -hmm. because Eden was the perfect garden. And when you get up to the top of our hill, there's a section that is really clear, get some sun, it's so beautiful. And you can sit in a gazebo that we built there yeah. and look out and you can really hear the Lord. You can How block beautiful. out everything else and just uh, you have this sense of his presence. There's another section that's lower that you got to walk up and it's a it's a pretty good walk. Uh, and 
getting things to tending things, you're, you know, you're at a slant. So you, at my age, you got to be careful how you, uh, how much time, you, how fast you try mm-hmm. to get it done. But uh, it's a little bit harder to tend and it's harder to, to get up to Eden because you got to walk through this. And he says, that's the Gethsemane section of your garden. And in order, and this was the lesson, in order to get to Eden, you got to walk through Gethsemane. Amen. Oh, that's and so beautiful. We, even, we even named the garden the edge, the ED for Eden and the GE for Gethsemane. Oh, I and love it. So that was one way. And it over the years, again, it's just become even bigger and more beautiful. We really enjoyed it. That was one way. Another one, I'll try to condense this. <laughs> uh, in, in working with your spouse, uh, Rich and Linda have taught this over the years, how important it is that you both listen to God. Uh, after uh, 12, 13 years, our HVAC systems in the house uh, were starting to go bad and uh, uh, they needed replacing. And I had worked and done all kinds of uh, uh, both financial uh, and uh, functional uh, analysis and had determined there was this one approach to uh, to replacing our system that was going to produce the lowest energy costs and the best return on the investment. And I had it all laid out. <laughs> and so uh, I told Sherry, because it was a significant outlay, I said, this, uh, we got to replace these and here's what we're going to do. I've got it all here. Yeah, you can look at the numbers. Well, Sherry's Sherry's an educator. <laughs> she could care less about my numbers. <laughs> but but she says, well, tell me about this, what you're going to do. And, and, and so I went through it because in order for this system, they had to drill down uh, into about 50 feet into the ground and create some tunnels uh, uh, in order for the cooler air to, to come into the house. And sherry heard that she says i don't like that Hmm. (laughs) and i said why and she gave me a silly response it it really seemed silly um uh, she said oh it's going to disrupt uh the rock the house could fall it it was more of a fearful i said sherry that's silly honey here are the numbers (laughs) she says i don't care she says i don't like it well, the Lord had, and Scripture tells us, we need to be in unison on these kind, these things. Mm. And so I went to the Lord and I told him, I said, Father, would you please work on Sherry? <laughs> uh, he, he needs the financial insight that I have. And, you've given me. <laughs> and if you will just uh, uh, work in her heart and convince her so that I can get going on this. <laughs> just like that. Father says, Sure, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just, I just sort of felt, went back in my chair and I just said, "What do you mean? You got to be kidding." <laughs> uh, and he says, "No, her reasoning might not be correct in terms of the, of, uh, of uh, what was going to happen, but uh, but she is right in her conclusion because this will not work on your house as as it is supposed to." So you really don't want to go that way. Well, uh, Sherry was shocked when I told her I was going to, not going to do what, what I wanted to because of her input. But but it was such a blessing. And in mm-hmm. fact, it was not only the blessing in that event, but it, it, it illustrated to her that I really did want us to be uh, mm-hmm. together and united in our, in our decisions. And we began to do more and more and I, my prayers to the Lord were no longer to change others, but to bring us, to bring us truth yeah. and to bring wisdom. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful. Those are uh, uh, great stories of, of just how it works. And, uh, you know, as we, uh, you know, finish our time with you, uh, what would you say for somebody that says, okay, I, I heard what you just said. I would like to do that. What, what's a good way for them to start to move down that path. And of course, you know, Kathy and I are going into the depth of this on our podcast, and then we'll actually have you back while we're still in the podcast uh, process and actually talk talk a little bit further. But what would you say would be a good way for someone who says, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to be where you are. I can hear God say, no, it's not, it's not what you want. It's what Sherry wants. Well, that's, you're hearing God's voice. How, Mm -hmm. what would you suggest somebody do to start that process? 
Well, uh, it, it's it's like everything else. There are certain fundamentals you've got to begin to develop and work on, even you know, like athletics or uh, any arena. You've got to get the fundamentals down. The first thing I think is you first of all you got to believe that God's going to talk to yeah. you. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, if you don't believe that, if you don't think he, you're going to hear anything, chances are uh, you won't, or what you hear is not going to be clear in, in anything. Now the Lord is so loving and generous; He'll work with you, but but you really need to recognize that because Scripture says it, mm-hmm. He wants to talk to us, and you got to believe He will. Yeah. Uh, secondly. I would say the important thing is you got to sort of isolate yourself. When I say isolate yourself, get in. Jesus talks about getting in your closet. Well, he doesn't mean specifically a closet, but he means a space where you're, you you blot out the world and 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 the noises of the world, and your focus is is strictly on God. Hmm. I just want to talk to God. I just want to communicate with him i not only want to tell him what's on my mind even though he already knows that but I, more importantly i want to hear what he has to say about that so i think uh and that can be anywhere for it's different ways different people can hear it in different areas uh and uh, uh but but get into that spot and it can be many spots it can be several but get in those areas where it's just you and him uh and then thirdly uh, uh, be willing to to allow him to take you to uh, neutrality. That's a term mm-hmm. Richard had, had taught, and he was so right. That is, get rid of your own desires. Mm-hmm. All I want is what he wants. All I want to do is to hear what he wants to hear, wants to tell me. What I want in my own heart is 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 secondary. It's elementary. It has, it's not important. I just want what he wants. I think those are three things. And once you do that, then start this, the sequence of ask, seek, and knock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Asking, keep after, after it. Okay, if you don't hear anything clearly the first times or the first maybe few months, whatever, the stay with it. He wants you to keep doing it. That's why it's not only asking, it's seeking and then knocking. And then just let him mm-hmm. open the doors. Yeah. Because uh, and you open you open the door to your heart, he'll open the door to his. Yeah. And yep. he'll let you in, and you have a discourse, and, and it can occur both. He may take you to scripture. He may speak to you in that still small voice. He may do it in some other ways. We don't have time to go into those, but um, but he will speak. So I think those are three what I call sort of fundamental steps that have to be taken before it can happen. Yeah, thank you, Larry. And we would say that, you know, as you do that, you know, write down what you think you're hearing and just your thoughts, your ideas. Uh, and uh, we're able and we're willing, if you do that and you want to even send in that and or communicate with us to, uh, you know, questions at abideministries.com, we actually will will get back to you with, do you understand here's what God is saying? Keep going with that. And we can actually in, engage Larry in that process as well. So mm, okay. um, we would love for you to uh, take what Larry said and just have a heart to begin. Uh, go into the quietness. Write down what you think you're hearing. And then we'll, we all will help you go further because we helped each other. And as we did, <laughs> we get to the beauty of what Larry experienced with, uh, no, son, that's sure he's right. <laughs> Uh, which is cool because that's the answer. See, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Larry said he wants to hear. So, Larry, thank you for sharing. Uh, we will uh, invite you back and uh, engage you in the process here. And uh, we're going to continue sharing specifics, and then we'll ga- engage you back into that process uh, and hear more of your stories and how we, and we're so grateful. I'm so grateful mm-hmm. that God is working with you and to put this material together that we can share with the audience and uh, God, uh, Larry, we just you know pray that God's blessing on you, you and Sherry, continue to speak to Larry in a great way, in a mighty way, and that he can both receive it and then learn how to give it away as we do that together. And we praise you and thank you for his beautiful life in Christ's name, amen. 
Amen. Blessings. Well, Blessings, thank you Debbie. so much for sharing and um, just authentically and for really honestly, you're listening and being faithful to now give this away and to share it with others because it is so, so important. So we appreciate that. If you have questions, send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep, we'll see you then. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.